Hey everyone, so I'm working on Sunday's uh, video here and I haven't had time to edit anything so I'm, I decided I'd pretty much just do a video today explaining what I've been doing for the past week and uh, I should be able to make probably two or three videos out of, out of the trip but about two months ago I was offered a trip to Korea with, from Volvo to come try out some new machines and give a customer base feedback on that. So for the past entire week I've been in Korea um, with four other people, of course all the engineers there and we've we've looked at a bunch of machines and I've been able to give a positive feedback on what we like and don't like and stuff that they can change for new machines. So, But like I said about a month ago or about two months ago I was offered that. It was a week long trip. They covered everything and uh, I went with Danny he's the product guy from Pennsylvania so we flew together and went over there I left last Saturday at I think nine o'clock in the morning and we got there at what time did we get there I don't remember but they are 13 hours ahead of us so it's 430 Sunday evening right now so it would be 530 uh, Monday morning there uh, so being over there for a week it was just horrible trying to communicate with people back here because everybody's sleeping when you're up over there when you're sleeping it's it's you know six o'clock here or you know during the daytime here so it kind of left like between four three to four a.m. to about eight a.m. was about the only time you could really talk to people um, and get anything done but it was it was a fun trip I had a blast I'm uh, so grateful that they offered for me to go over there. Uh, I'll probably add some clips in this video, just some pictures and everything, but I'll just go ahead and explain everything so in the next two videos it'll make a lot more sense. We went over there, we left on that Saturday, ended up over there. No, it was Sunday when we arrived. It was Sunday at like 1 o'clock. So we had that Sunday afternoon to kind of sightsee a little bit and check out everything and get into our hotel. I'm looking at pictures now so I can just kind of remember what I was seeing. There's just so much to take on. And so Sunday we had time to go sightsee. Bright and early Monday morning we were up. It was about, I think it was like 30 minute drive from where we stayed to the factory. Um, we went to, I was able, they were able to get me a factory tour on Monday. So Monday what I did, and you'll see this in tomorrow's video probably. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but over the past week, they've just kind of been some crappy videos I've thrown together just to kind of keep everything active for the week I was gone. So it's sorry if I haven't commented on anything. I've had very little computer access time while I was over there. But back to where I was Monday we went to the factory tour and I was able to see pretty much where all our excavators come from and I know a lot of people are going to say why why Korea why Korea well they're using the same factory of previous excavators and you'll see in that video there's a there's a bulletin on the wall a billboard and it shows the product line of where Volvo come from and in the late 90s Volvo bought out Samsung and the Volvo excavator kind of produced out of that machine so instead of building a new factory to build Volvos they just redid that factory there I mean everything was already there from a financial standpoint it makes sense to go ahead and just switch it over there um, but like the wheel loaders and the rollers are all produced here in the US in Chippensburg and I was able, I've taken a tour of that plant already but all the excavators are made there I think I think some might still be made in Germany Germany or Sweden I can't remember but pretty much everything I Volvo excavators I've seen there because they had the minis all the way up to the 950 are produced there I was not able to take any video inside the factory and that's pretty common with all factories they don't want uh, people to see how exactly everything's made but as a customer, it was good to go in there and see just how, I'm telling you, it was built durable. It's kind of an eye-opener how much quality goes into like the frame and everything. And it's like Danny told me that's why they can 
offer that lifetime, I think, boom warranty. I don't know if they have one on the frame, but the way I was seeing it made, it was no doubt um, very durable. I mean, they set up everything where pretty much everything's automated as far as welding and everything so that you can get a good quality control product out of that. You don't have somebody coming in ill on Monday and not welding it like it should be. So in the factory you'll see a lot of D models or the plant. I took a, some videos outside of all the new machines. You'll see a lot of D models. Those are for the foreign market. They can still run the tier 3 emission stuff. So they're still producing D model excavators. You'll see a bunch of those like I said in the when I do the walkthrough of the yard and you know China is a big supporter of those they don't have all the emission standards the tier 4 that we have here in the US so you'll see a lot of D and E models pretty much D models are banned from the US you can no longer run tier 3 or or import a tier 3 you can still run it if it's here you can run it till it dies and still get parts for it um, but as far as say I wanted to order one there's no way that I could order one and bring it over here because it doesn't meet our tier 4 standards um let's see we had the factory tour monday tuesday i can't really talk a whole lot about it but we went to a test site this volvo's proving grounds and they have all pretty much all the prototype machines that they have and we were able to run the newer models which i mean it's pretty much identical to the the new machines but they're adding features to it and they wanted customer based feedback and i was the only person from North America other than Danny to come so pretty much everything all the decisions made I had like 25 percent um, 25 percent of that was from my part as well on yay we should continue with this or no let's just scrap this and be done with it so we were able to try that out spent spent four days doing that Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday or Friday was the meeting where we went over with all the engineers in the room I think I can show the pictures of that. It was like probably 20 of, 20 of us in there. And the four of us, we all had reviews for each machine that we tried out, what we liked, didn't like, and then we had to present all that to the engineers for them to see what they can do to figure out on how to fix that. Um, but I will say this, I did get to run a 250. And in my mind, that is now the, the sweetest machine I've ever been in. I would like to run some more but they have taken the speed from the 220 and put it in the 250 and that is a badass machine now I would have to say that that is my the favorite machine that I ran there um, you'll when they release it you're gonna go wow <laughs> that they've got it figured out on that machine they have got their stuff figured out on that so we did on all uh, did all that and I took a video, I, I, it's going to be two videos, I'm looking at all the clips right now so I can stay, stay kind of in line with everything. But you'll see the first video will be of the factory tour, no I may do the first video of just kind of Korea in, Korea in itself, I mean it's just, it's so different than what I'm used to over here, you know all the vehicles are smaller, people can't drive, <laughs> it's a little dangerous on the roads. And but all the trucks, it's just wild seeing all the trucks. You know, they got two front axles and two tandems for all their dump trucks, and they can haul 25 tons on that. And you know, everything's a cab over because the roads are like this wide here. Once you get off the highway, it's it's different. And there's no way that our trucks will be able to navigate the road system that they have over there. And the hotels, you know, where we stayed was pretty much about as American as you can get as far as comfort but we got off like the main streets out there and it's it is different you know you got just the way everything is it's it's hard to explain I wish I could have got more videos of that but it's just there's like two million people in that town it's just we stood out like a sore thumb so I didn't want to be walking around just filming everything and and all that it just seemed a little awkward so I took some pictures and I'll put all that in the slideshow and it'll kind of make make a little more sense on what I'm explaining um, but the dump trucks are different they haul all the equipment and flatbed trucks all the excavators in the back of like a little two-ton truck no chains no binders on nothing it's just 
put up in there. I saw a roller on the back of a, a big truck, no chains and no straps on it, just a block under the tire. And I missed the video clip of it, but they had like a EW80 or 200, whatever model it was, wheeled excavator just sitting up on a flatbed going down the road. I'm like, oh, we would be arrested in the States doing that. But I had a good time. It was it was a very fun experience. I got to see a, a lot of stuff and and try a lot of new foods. It's you know I try to keep it the best I could eat, but it was I ate stuff I didn't know I was eating. But it, it's very um, plant based over there. Noodles and you have your meats and everything. But it's it's nothing like the diet we have over here. Um, I have this glass right here. And their serving size for drinks, that would almost be like two servings. You, when you get a little cup, it's almost like a little bathroom cup. It's about that big around, about that tall. And that's your serving. So what I would drink, like this glass full for dinner, would be probably over a day serving for what you would get at like a restaurant. And But the people are smaller, so I guess it all works out. But it was like... When they hand me the little water glass, I'm like two sips and done. <laughs> so I learned when I went to when we went to the restaurants towards the end, we went to a buffet restaurant. I just get me one glass with ice in it and fill it up, and then just go ahead and get me another one because I knew that I would go through both of those drinks before I was even done with the meal. So it all worked out. It was fun. Definitely a diet change. Um, I see where there's not a lot of fat people. <laughs> they do not eat. What we eat here back at the States is just the the portions you get. You get plenty of food, but it's just zero to no carbs at all. Um, but it was fun. I had a great time. And I think I'm pretty well wrapping it up. I've gone through all the little video clips. I don't remember if I mentioned the hotel or not. But we stayed. At, if I did, I'll edit this out. But I stayed at a hotel. It was the... I got a whole video of it. It was just wild. The hotel room, I mean, it was like a state-of-the-art state of the art hotel. And each one had its own little... We were chauffeured around the whole time, so I didn't have a personal car. And I wouldn't have drove anywhere anyway because all the GPSs were in Korean. And I can't read any Korean uh, or the signs. But every hotel room had a little garage. And you could park your vehicle in there. But to get into it, it's like a garage door opener on the outside. And the garage doors aren't metal like we're used to at home. They were like fabric. And it would just kind of telescope up like blinds almost. And it was a button on the outside to raise it up. And you pushed a button on the inside to let it down. And the strangest part to me was you walked up the staircase to the room was upstairs. And you'd push this button room in on the outside on this keypad and it would open you in. You didn't have to type in a code or nothing. So it was like zero security for anything. Anybody could walk into any room on this hotel. And when we were all getting checked in, one of the guys that was uh, with us actually walked into my room not knowing it. And I was standing there unpacking and the door opened. He was like, whoops. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, wrong room. I think this is going to happen a lot. So you go into your room and the door would automatically lock. And I actually got trapped in the room the first night. I couldn't figure out how to get out because um, the th you pull on the door handle, it wouldn't happen. You had to go over to this keypad and hit room out. Well, it's all in Korean. And But I finally squinted enough, you know, everything's where, you know, you would see up here is down here. So you had to, like, really look at it. And there was, it was in English below it that said room out. And I pushed that, and it unlocked the door. I don't know what happens if the power goes out. Hopefully the door unlocks, but we would all got trapped in there but it was it was wild but you could turn the door lock and lock yourself while you were in there but while you were gone unless there was something on that keypad that i couldn't read in korea and there was no way to lock the door or maybe she just set it up easy for us because she didn't want to have to deal with us not knowing how to get in our rooms which is probably the case but but anyways great experience i was so glad that i did not like the flight was oh god we had it was a three connection flight to get there and three on the way back so it took me right at 30 hours to get home yesterday. So I'm still a little jet lag. Um, it should be 3.45 in the morning there. Now it's 4.45 here in the afternoon. Um, 
So trying to get my schedule back on time is hopefully I can go to bed tonight because usually when we're good we go to bed here I'm awake over there. Uh, it didn't bother me going over there, so hopefully I didn't really sleep a whole lot on the plane. So I would sleep last night, and I should kind of get back on schedule for tonight. So I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the videos, and as soon as I can get those up, I'll be glad to show you the trip. And then I'll be back to work, and hopefully we'll get our daily video back. Thanks for watching.